Hello. Welcome back to Ace Attorney. Gonna play more stuff. We're in the trial for to see if our clients for murder. For murder. For murder. Yes, we need to see if our client is pro murder. <laughs> pro murder. <laughs> is he for murder? Oh, I got it. <laughs> or anti murder. <laughs> or anti murder. Hey, Nick. I'll make that bigger. One second. Thank you. Okay. What is it this time? I won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Two. Only two guards. That's all there's ever been. Until somebody swaps out in front of me in my narrow vision like a lion. Because Phoenix Wright is only staring forward. Phoenix has the worst tunnel vision. <laughs> exactly. Phoenix has tunnel vision. I can't see no one else. I can't even turn my head. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door? Don't you know this, Nick? They're having Detective at me's trial today. Detective at me? What? They're gonna try him as mask to mask, and wasn't true there have been a lot of people for the first one, too? Yeah. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see Mask to Mask trial. I know. By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Pearls has really gone into her training lately, huh? I don't know. Yeah, ever since that incident last year, which had nothing to actually do with failing one. Yeah. Please! Don't ignore me! Oh, Mr. Delight, good morning. No one likes me. <laughs> okay. No one would notice me even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. W wait a sec. You don't mean you're the murderer? No! No, I'm just a poor thief. No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. Now, let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending to him to help him commit the heist. Possible. But today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. Wait a minute. Plead guilty. Yeah, plead guilty. Plead guilty. Your trial will be over in two seconds. Yep. <laughs> the defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready. Preparation is the last refuge of the week. So you didn't prepare at all? <laughs> okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with your opening statement, Mr. Godot. Ugh. He's got the judge in the palm of his hand yet again. Ron Delay is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. Wait, you actually gave one this time? Hmm. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Get Out. Ha! Then you need to get out more, Mr. Your Honor. Life is war, but that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. That's all my statement means. You understand now, alright? Yes, well then let me briefly summarize the details of this case. 
Well, the judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. <laughs> <laughs> the victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in a safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated as 1 a.m. on the previous day. And that's when our little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. He rubbed his fingers all over the corpse. <laughs> Very well then, Mr. Godot. Please call your first witness. I will never get over the fact that his first response to seeing someone dead is to hide the body. Yeah. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee before any given trial. During any given trial. <laughs> that means he drinks more before and after. How is this man alive? My bowels are none of your business. <laughs> All I know is my bowels like a doe number 107,000. <laughs> but the first one is always the best. So it's all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mr. Godot, your witness? Okay then, let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright? Does the defense have any objections? Maybe a bit of a disadvantage having a defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ha! Huh. You've got guts, Trey. All right then, Mr. Ron Delight, please take the stand. Isn't it Delight's choice and not Phoenix's? Yeah. You did it, didn't you? Oh my god, you're not allowed to ask questions like that. <laughs> Objection. Improper question leading the witness. Yes. What? Uh, <laughs> what? Did you just say yes? Yeah, he said yes, then backpedaled. Ron. Ron, come Why on. Why did we trust this guy? I don't know. That's not true. <laughs> hmm. For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. Once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own coffin. Why did you let him testify then? <laughs> that was a bad choice. Ah, very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bullard, why did you go to KB Security? Oh, well, I... That's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. My visit to KB Security. You know, this is gonna make it worse because he's gonna say that he's masked a mask. Yeah. And then like, Master Mask is being tried next door, you stupid person. <laughs> that evening, around 1 a.m., I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. That blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I've been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. One AM. The exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate. The strong drink it up. Ha! Huh. It's bitter today, too. <laughs> Just like my destiny. You never know that from the way he's chugging it down. 
He does like his chalk. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you please. Coffee is chalk. No, that was me. 1 a.m., huh? You're absolutely sure about that? Yes, that's why my watch said when I saw my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Uh, no. Actually, I'm not really sure. My watch was slow. My internal clock was a little bit. 1 a.m. <laughs> that's the exact time the victim, Mr. Bullard, was murdered, correct? It's too late for coffee date, that's for sure. It ordered you there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've got another blackmail letter? <laughs> okay, let's just open that can. Oh, of course, they say things like steal this or take that. <laughs> Why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say anymore. Now what should I do? Press harder. So what did the blackmail letter in Why question would they say? Just let you stop him there. Yeah. They should have pressed him more. Especially with how <laughs> desperate you look to make him shut up. Yeah. It said to bring fifty thousand dollars. Money, eh? A perfect motive for a committing murder. Oh, but, well, wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, you had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. But hmm. you said you got multiple blackmail letters. Yeah, an important point indeed. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. Yes, sir. Ha. A muddy mud skipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. You know it sounds worse when you said you weren't going to pay it. <laughs> <laughs> Just what were you being blackmailed about anyway? The blackmail letter said if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Buller didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. So that's why Mr. Light didn't believe he was mask to mask. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. Hmm. Get him on anything? I mean, if it didn't scare him, why did he go? That's what I'm looking around for. First height had the picture of Ron Delight. Mm, I don't see how that would be a connection though. To be a security uh, be a security chief for he was scary, right? Hmm. Hmm. 
Yes, that's right. Security chief, you? And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge. Perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? You are very happy to press random motives. Are you gonna stick to a single one? At least for your story? <laughs> my motives are as varied as my coffee does. Hmm. This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. I can change the subject. What do we change it to? Life after being fired, why he was fired, don't say anything. What's the reason he was fired for? Mr. Delay, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well, well. The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Okay, then I'll take it back. Defendant, please answer the question. <laughs> I, well, I needed money. You needed money? Um, well, you see, Desi loves to spend. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough. So I stole data from the company. Come again. Maybe security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was their security team chief, you stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullard found out and I was fired immediately. Why? Wish I had never asked that. I was somehow able to keep a secret and made it seem like I had to quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to that company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that she you stole your data from your company, is that correct? Hey, yes, I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse. Crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to <laughs> this case from the clutches of disaster. Well, now she does. Do I have a way to prove that? That is Desi. You literally said Desi doesn't know that. Objection! Oh, Desi. Huh. Mr. Delay, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared. Very scared. Of having a certain person find out your secret. Gulp. A certain person? Mr. Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Wow, boy! Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Gadoop. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? 
Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Oh, hmm. No, everything has fallen neatly into place for him. But don't talk about my Desi like that. Or you'll be sorry. And he just made it worse. Hmm. Don't threaten people in the courtroom. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped out in just 20 minutes. <laughs> Clearly there was sufficient motive for murder. You know, I think this guy actually is better than the other prosecutors. I mean, he knows what's going on and made you prove it instead of proving it himself. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of made everything worse. <laughs> he stole data for his wife and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Ugh. What happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us. We're all ears. At the CEO's office. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there. Dead. I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Mast and Mast struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Hatme turned out to be the culprit himself, that was all a lie. Huh. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What are you saying? I really was attacked. We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite? Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. Who is this suspicious shadow? If there were a thousand of me, and even if one knew, I tell you, trust me. <laughs> Okay then, how was the victim, Mr. Bullard, at that time? What do you mean by how was he? Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place. That's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Forget it. <clears throat> Your forehead? Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was a fast and powerful hit. So I think I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasped what we were asking. Yeah, I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. <laughs> Maybe that would knock some sense back in them. That? Could you please clarify what you were referring to? Why am I masked in mask costume, of course? But wait a just a moment. Masked in mask? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as masked in mask. And then I descended upon the office of the CEO of KB Security. What? That is totally a smart move. Nick, did you 
know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Wait a minute, so you walk into a security place, you're as a fucking thief. <laughs> Even I didn't know that. Seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it until, until now. Wait! That's not right. Hmm. You know how sometimes things just slip your mind. Ha! My six cup of coffee is starting up at a me, staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd have been killed if I hadn't been wearing my master mask costume. It was so someone was trying to kill him. Hmm. Why were you dressed up as master mask? Why, because I'm master mask, of course. What are you talking about? Master Mask Trial is being held next door. Why didn't you just say you were guilty? <laughs> uh, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that, that time, I thought I was being blackmailed over the Master Mask issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I expected. Took a lot longer. What is he talking about? Wait and see. I want to hear it. I want to hear what he has to say. I gotta wait and see how this develops. Hey, why aren't you doing anything? Because it'll probably end up causing more trouble. I'll tackle it once I'm mentally prepared. I guess I should prepare myself for the worst, too. <laughs> so, so I should have pressed? I get it, the feeling if you pressed it would have ended up the same way, you just probably would have ended up with coffee in your face. Hmm. Oh wait, I found it. Okay, so you should have pressed. What? I thought he was going to say it if you didn't press. Dang it. When he came to? Yes, I was passed out in the corner of the room. Do you know when your assailant made their escape and to where? I'm afraid I don't really remember. Huh? Once they hit me, I lost all track of what was going on. I think that's when they made their escape. Ha! Huh. That's certainly a convenient story for you, isn't it? Certainly is, isn't it, Mr. Wright? It almost sounds practiced. I don't know why you're selling me. yesterday, didn't we? Not much in this testimony either. I bet he's still hiding something. Yeah, we need to go back. Don't be surprised. What do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. You fucking idiot. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullard's body. <laughs> Would just stop it. What was that? Back up a second. Yes? <laughs> the point where you decided to rub all over the body? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable. I didn't kill him, but I picked up the body and threw him in the safe. <laughs> why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were you thinking? <laughs> Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? 
The answer is simple. When they drink too much coffee, of course. That's what you should be saying, Godot. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delay hit the body because he's a murderer? Seeing how the, per huh. how the fence is calling him a murderer. <laughs> so you're not as stupid as you look? The fence thinks that he's the murderer. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Ray, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Because you're Judge Santa Claus? Witness, make sure you add this to a testament. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, looks like a storm front is moving in <laughs> over the fair weather judge. I still don't understand that. Who in their right mind would be like, Oh, well, I woke up next to this body. I better fucking hide it. Instead of calling the police myself. No, it didn't take you 10 minutes. Come on, man. Your Honor, could you take a pl please take a look at this record? What might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, the security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Ron Delight truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. And after all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Ha! Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there was security personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, it wasn't anywhere in the vicinity, it was not, not something Mr. Delight could have known. Dang. Ha! Huh. Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. This buzzer is extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. We know because Maya pushed it. Yeah. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Oh yeah, you said that he was unconscious. Yeah. Ugh. Wait, does that mean the real murderer hit them both on the head and then hit the button himself and then ran away? Yeah. Doesn't that make it worse for the person who hit them both? Yeah, I think so. Fine. Let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delay said he'd felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted. That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean that there was another person in the room. That's right, whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Hey, cool. So establish somebody else was in the room. Mr. Wright, this, this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight, the one who killed Kane Bullard. 
Then who pressed the buzzer? It was... The victim, of course. He pressed the buzzard when the defendant attacked him. I can't believe the idea of just running your hands all over a dead body is what saves this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the fact that he put him in the safe is now saving him. Yeah. If he just ran around like an idiot, they would have been like, Oh, well, you should have run. You hear the buzzer. Yeah. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push that button. Ugh. Hmm, so Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene, but how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Buzzard who sounded? Cerebral hemorrhaging from blunt trauma to the head? No. <clears throat> yeah. There's no fingerprints on it. Yeah, the defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzard. I believe this is the piece of incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself, naturally he would have left his fingerprints behind. Ron Delight obviously wiped them off. Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that bun, I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Master Mask. And Master Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have to wipe the bun free of fingerprints? order. Ha! Huh. It would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. What? What? I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. <laughs> However, if the real killer was there at the scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Eliminate the other person. Yeah. Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Huh, it looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. <laughs> J just give me a minute to click my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer pressed. Security was supposed to respond. Hmm. That means they wanted security to respond. They wanted to be like, oh, this person fucking attacked me. Yeah. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Oh-ho! You got some guts. I like that in an opponent. 
Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? Call the security guard. To find out what it did. <laughs> the killer knew that if they had pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes, although it, as it turned out, they never showed up. He was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Ha! Huh. What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. It's so nice and then flat out show you the an actual silhouette of the killer so you know exactly who it is. <laughs> yeah. He always wants you to look at him, so... Hypothetically, yes. Now then. In this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was a murderer. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder. <laughs> order, order, order. Ha! Huh, it would seem... I've been made to eat my own words again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. <coughs> Miss Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Her, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only master mask. So. Nick, you mean the real killer is? We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Delight? Are we going straight for it? Yep. Unless you want to sit here and tell the judge that he murdered. Because <laughs> 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 that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Detective, look at me. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective, look at me. You mean the master mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not master mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order, order. Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Theft and murder, which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. And look at me confess there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course. A famous detective was unmasked as, well, as masked the mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his, that was his true objective all along. To be found guilty. Masked the mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lord Lee Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as masked and masked was look at me's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi? Yeah, he wanted to be considered a famous thief instead. 
Yeah. You know, it's almost time. For what? For well, look at me's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. Mr. Look at Me's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Hmm. Ha! Huh. A bet's only good when your life's the ante. Ante. Mr. Wright, I believe in you. Mr. Delight. Uh, so please, I'm begging you. Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Oh. Mia's showing up again. What was that? Don't destroy Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. The ghost of Mia is haunting me once again. <laughs> that voice sounds like... Mia! <laughs> your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Ah, so that's your answer, huh? Very well. Decided as well. This court will not take a 20-minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Look at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, it's pain. They made this so much easier because it's supposed to be pain. <laughs> Mr. Payne can never get an easy trial. You're gonna fuck this one up for him, too. <laughs> yeah, Payne's like, I have a good and easy trial. I'm like, nope. You performed splendidly. I have to say, Mr. Payne, you performed splendidly. Splendidly. Isn't Payne your character? Oh, he is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, sir. I forgot me. You were the one who. <laughs> Who's this guy? Who is that? It looks like they they took the judge but put a different face on him just because they didn't want to draw a new character. Yeah. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant. Look at me. Wait. Don't hand down your verdict yet, please. Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Cock, welcome to my courtroom. Who's this hoser, eh? <laughs> my name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. And I wish to file an accusation against this man. Look at me. An accusation? You accused Master Mask. That man is not mask to mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. Well, what? Mm. It's getting serious. Yeah, now pull everyone into the courtroom with you. Oh my god. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> my sis? Could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. She's harassing you again? <laughs> then she's still alive. Inside your heart. Nicky boy. Oh, Mr. Light. 
it true that Detective is the real killer? To be honest, we don't have any definite proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lord Lee Taylor that night? Not to mention we don't exactly know the motive. No, he wasn't at Lord Lee Taylor and they've already said he likes to hide the whole day. Yeah. I mean, why would Detective at me when I killed Kane Buller? Oops, it's almost time. Better get to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. And it's gotta happen sooner rather than later. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Look at me. Please take the stand. Well, well, how do you do, sir lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Mask to Mask. I'm sorry, I'm afraid even the great look at me has no idea what you mean. Of course, I have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could have known what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried as mask to mask. Indeed, it truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. Why haven't they removed that yet? <laughs> so you continue to insist that you are in fact Master Mask. Of course. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1 a.m., Kane Bullard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. What? But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, sir, judge. Um, thanks. <clears throat> Alright, Mr. Atme. The night of the murder, speak. We're all ears. As you wish, sir prosecutor. The alibi. I was stealing the yarn as mask to mask, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured Mask to Mask was the same time as the murder. Hmm, seems the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up until now was all part of his plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. Dun 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 dun. Even a great master mask cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. I think he's trying to say you're full of it, Nick. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. Hmm. So this photograph is approved, proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. That is why I am called Mask the Mask. 
But conveniently, that also means that there's no way to tell who this really is. But what do you mean? Ha! Huh. Are you saying that this is not, in fact, look at me? That it could be an accomplice dressed up as mass to mass to create an alibi? Ho ho! What an interesting idea! Are you saying that I lone wolf look had an accomplice? I don't think you did. If Look At Me was at KB Security during the murder, then the mask and mask in this picture has to be a fake. But it was an accomplice. But right now I have no idea who it is. I don't have any idea right now either. Baseless objections are just what that guy wants. There's gotta be another way, and I'm gonna find it. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lord Lee Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed. There was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes. Evil is what I am. Hey Nick, isn't there something odd about this? Hmm? Ken Crabby was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lordy Taylor while he's the only one watching it, he'd have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true, it's kind of odd. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here, is that correct? Indeed it is. That is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. When you think about it, it's really odd. You say that almost as if you had taken this picture of, take, had this picture taken on purpose. He was simply caught by the very camera that he had set up. We all have days like that. Indeed. It turned out that there was no such thing as a perfect crime after all. Life is truly ironic thing. A sad blue melody. Melody. Looks like I better gather more information for now. If he's truly the killer, there's got to be something funny in that photo. I say the photo is his accomplice. Yeah. He keeps saying that's his witness and stuff. Exactly, you had an accomplice. Now remember you've said that, Mr. Trad, because there's no going back. If you're making baseless claims, I'll treat you to a penalty myself. Penalty is probably gonna be boiling hot too. So is it Mr. Trad who is the accomplice? Photo.
<laughs> Dang it. There we go. Hmm, so I guess that didn't work. About the camera that took this photograph. How come now? It's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the time step on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lordly Taylor, and on top of that. Yeah. What in the world, Gutto? <laughs> it's literally Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. I see. Looks like I better find out something else that could be suspicious. Paint marks? Yeah, because I was thinking the paint marks would be when Adrian Andrews dropped the urn bucket. The urn the box. The hmm? The paint is in the picture. Well, yeah. But not at the time that she spilled it.
Pressed them on this though. You're supposed to get an option to say if there's something wrong with it. Really? I already pressed them on this though. It says that you're supposed to have pressed two and four before pressing three. Ah. Oh. So you, if you did them in order, you would not have gotten this because reasons. Potato. So they're bringing that back from number one, huh? Yep. Where you gotta press things in a certain order. Press in a certain order, otherwise you would not get this one. Oh come on. So yeah, you had to press both the statement before and after in order to get the statement that you wanted from him. See, this is why I'm correct on the evidence. Yeah, but you're just too far off. I'm correct that you should be able to use either the urn or the paint marks. Because it would prove it's two weeks ago and not the time of the murder. But it's not two weeks ago. The yes, paint's been there the whole time. She never cleaned it. So it doesn't prove the time. It proves that it's been within two weeks of the murder. Oh, I guess. Now if she cleaned it up, it would have been two weeks ago. Never bothered to do that. I really hate these presses that you have to press in a certain order. Yeah, those are really awful. There's like no thought to it. Well, hey, at least you can save on the stupid clown. <laughs> yeah. I hate that guy. So, I mean, I already pressed on this. How would I know that's new conversation? Entirely new conversation happens. That you were struggling too much because they made you struggle that much. I mean, I could pre could have presented the box to just say the box didn't have paint on it. Yeah, that's the main thing. Why doesn't the box have paint on it? It's a different box. What about this photo that you find funny? Smile. It's got like a little curt smile. Then you know how to do the laugh. It's very important. <laughs> Perhaps this is the area in question. This area? Could you be any more vague? Ha! Huh. Today's Java has a little extra kick to it. It seems that the funny pot lies in the area of the defense. So I was wrong, huh? Huh? That's wrong? That is wrong. Hmm. Game said that's wrong. Why? Why? <laughs> this game's getting too specific yeah, on what it wants. Way too specific. It wants you to be specific. So. Am I supposed to click on something specific in the splotches? So, am I click, supposed to click the splotch or the empty splotch? The splotch. The pink, probably. Take that! Okay. This is a blitz thing. Ah, blood. Now this case is getting interesting. Um, uh, <laughs> not exactly. This stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach colored at that. From blood to peaches, the judge sure loves going on wild and wild chan tangents. 
The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse. Turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright? What is supposed to be in the picture instead of the paint? The statue? The supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Golden statue arrived, happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. Perfect size for covering up the paint stains. I myself was there the night the theft took place and saw the statue in that spot. If this picture was truly taken on that night, then that statue should have been been, been there. You know, at this point, I would wonder if Phoenix was a murderer because it's always conveniently there when the murder took place. Yeah. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Hmm. Perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally. Your Honor, the statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would take more than just an accidental push to move it that distance. Huh, in that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why that statue was moved that night? Can you do it then? Never mind who moved it. The real question is, why did they move it? Yeah. Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you are prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? I mean, if it was at me, why would he move the statue? I mean, it could only be at me, right? Yeah, it could only be at me. Why would he, though? Wait, wasn't the statue holding the murder weapon, though? Yeah. So unless he wanted to take the murder weapon, or the picture, it'd be strange, right? And people would notice that the weapon was gone from when they moving. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move that statue? Look at me. You pretended to move mask to mask. To create an alibi by showing you were at Lord Lee Taylor that night. This photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you had to move the statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory, please enlighten us. What? Well, if everything else in the photo is correct, what was the thing he could manipulate by removing the statue from the picture? I don't know. <laughs> I'll give you a thumbs up. I looked at this one up. It's like, apparently the statue only showed up on that specific day. If at me didn't influence the time, it doesn't show the day he took it in there. So this thing? Yep. It doesn't say what day it is. You just took a picture like this any other day. Oh. But the statue being there was unique to the day of the crime. Hmm. Naturally, the lie in this photo is the timestamp. But what do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. 
On the night in question, look at me, went to KB Security, and murdered Kane Bullard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at Lord Lee Taylor at the same this time. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor. When was the statue placed beside the warehouse door? Well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime. It was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke at me had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. But what the... Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ah. So on the day of the crime, Mr. Atme must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Look At Me had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been in this photo. Order, order. Mr. At Me, is this true? One moment, Your Honor. Have you forgotten this? What's that? The data for the Book Bispink Warehouse Computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. Objection! It's true that the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. Hmm. Order, order. Mr. Godot, what is the meaning of this? Godot, I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. Oh, he's actually getting on a prosecutor for once. Dang. My eleventh cup. Are you okay? <laughs> I promise to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. Uh, However, the defense has a very good point. A good point? So what? How is the caffeine affecting this? Well, it turned his skin a little bit different. Really? He is now coffee skin. You are what you drink, and you are what you eat. Well, I'm worried about the caffeine. Does this mean he consciously is normally tired and he needs to drink this during the trial? Or is he just hyped up on coffee during the whole trial at this point? Seriously, wouldn't that give a normal person the jitters? Yeah, he doesn't have the jitters at all. Just like used it too much to the point where he doesn't even feel it anymore. <laughs> His liver must hate him. <laughs> we are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. I think he's got his points mixed up with his other points. So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time. And that the statue was moved in order to make it match. It's a very interesting idea. However, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is... That it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe... Can never reach their dreams. That's very true. No way. Don't fall for that, Your Honor. Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Master Mask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes, please provide this court with your testimony. By your plan to steal the urn. I'm seeing something interesting about his next one. There is actually... Four options for where you can present the same thing on his next, on this 
thing that he's saying. So they gave you options now. Yay, finally. There's four different places you can present the same exact thing. Alright, well we gotta end it here. Wanna thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. Hope you have yourself a good day. Bye bye.